Today I'm going to show you how to create a parallax background effect in Unity. What's up guys? Last week I showed you how to write a script that made your background loop endlessly. And in this video I want to add a few lines to that script to create a perfect parallax effect. But before I get into that, I just want to recap what last week's script did. Basically, we have a list of game objects that are added to our script. This can be any length of objects from just a single background element to hundreds of objects. Then when the scene is loaded, our script loops through all of these objects and creates clones of these objects. The goal here is to make enough clones of the object and space them out accordingly so they fit the width of the screen. Then it places these clones inside the object so they become children of the original object. The original object is then stripped of its sprite renderer, and its only job then at this point is to hold all of its clones. Then as the camera moves throughout the scene, we have multiple checks in place that detect if the camera is about to exceed the edge of our first or last child background object. For example, if the camera moves to the right of the screen, the first child will shift over to the right so that it covers the right edge and vice versa for the left edge. So then despite what speed our camera is moving, we will constantly have a seamless background. And if you'd like to work alongside this project, you can copy and paste this script off our website, or if you're a Patreon subscriber, you can download this project from our Patreon portal. Okay, let's begin. To modify this script to make it have a parallax effect is actually rather simple and only involves a few lines of code. So before we start coding, I wanna explain how this is intended to work. Firstly, I wanna mimic a perspective functionality. For those who are familiar, the further an object is away on the Z axis, the slower it will move in the background. So I like to set up my background objects to have a different Z axis value depending on the distance and speed I'd like it to move. So for an object like the sky, which contains stars, should be really far away. So let's set the value to something like 120. Then let's take the far mountains and change this value to something like half of that. So let's put 60. I feel like the clouds could appear in front of mountains. So let's go ahead and put 40. Then for the mountains, let's just put 30. And for the snow and the base element, let's keep these at zero. And if we toggle the 2D button, our object should look something like this. The reason we do this is because we want to be able to handle how far we want our objects to appear in the parallax effect. We will then use this value to calculate our parallax speed. Basically, our parallax speed is the value we want our background objects to move alongside the camera. An object that is further away will move at a speed that is very similar to the speed of the camera, and an object that is closest to the camera will hardly move at all. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and open up our background loop script. In our late update function, we already have a for each loop that loops through all of our background objects. Each individual background element is defined as OBJ. So let's then define our parallax speed for each individual object by writing float parallax speed equals transform.position.z divided by obj.transform.position.z. So if our camera Z position is negative 10, then if we divide our objects by that number, we will get values like this. As you can see, the further an object is away, the smaller the parallax speed is. But there's a few problems with this. Firstly, the number is a negative number. And secondly, if we have a Z position of zero, we can't divide by it. So it renders NAN, which stands for not a number. So let's fix the first problem by wrapping the formula by mathf.abs. This gives us the absolute value, which is just fancy talk for saying it gives us the positive value. Secondly, we then want to wrap this by mathf.clamp01, which takes our value and clamps the number between 0 and 1. This also solves our problem with dividing by 0. By using clamp, we avoid our value from being NAN. So then if we look at our values again, they look much better. But we have one last thing to fix. We want our parallax speed to be higher for objects that are further away. We can fix this easily by subtracting the entire equation by one. Now that we have our parallax speed figured out, let's complete the rest of the code. The first thing we want to do is keep track of the camera's position on the last frame. So up at the top, let's write private vector three last screen position. Then in the start function, let's give it a value by writing last screen position equals transform dot position. Then back in our late update function, we want to calculate the distance the camera moved on the X axis since the last frame. We can do this by writing float difference equals transform dot position dot X minus last screen position dot X. In order to keep track of the last screen position, let's define the value on the bottom of our late update function. 
Make sure to place this below our for each loop bracket. And then go ahead and write last screen position equals transform dot position. And now that we have our parallax speed defined and the distance our camera traveled, we can move our parent objects accordingly. To do this, we're going to use translate. So go ahead and write obj.transform.translate and in parentheses write vector3.write times difference times parallax speed. And if we press play in Unity, we should have a perfect parallax effect in our background using an orthographic camera. That was pretty quick and painless, right? If you found value in this video, go ahead and tap that like button and consider subscribing to this channel so you don't miss any future videos. And if you want to download this project including the artwork that was used, become a member on Patreon. All Patreon subscribers have access to all the projects that are used in these videos, plus a lot more. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next week.